For the second panel, please welcome Ms. Desiree Bollier, Mr. Joy Kempfer, Mr. Arthur Wiener, and Mr. Joram Goodkill. The second panel, as announced, will be in English, of course, because the three uh, key people taking part are uh, uh, mostly American, uh, even if uh, Mrs. Bollier is uh, of European and French origin, if I am correct. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, luxury outlet uh, retail channel is the second youngest in our, in our sector, and as a matter of fact, is just 20, 20, 20 years old. Uh, I, believe, I believe that uh, 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 Lucas Holk and myself tried to um, present in our first uh, report uh, what are potentially, uh, let's say, some uh, new challenges for this retail channel. From one side, that the practices of the uh, full price uh, uh, stores managers, and secondly, the online. Uh, uh, so the first uh, question I would like to, to put to our panelists uh, uh, is, uh, do you feel that uh, for the time being these challenges are uh, there or are just potential threats and potential challenges? Please, Mrs. Bollier. I just want to clarify for the record, I'm originally Lebanese. And like any Lebanese that left Lebanon, I grew up in France. Your question is about threat to the outlet business and challenges. I think it's no different that um, any other channel that you have outlined this morning. There are many opportunities and um, as long as we remain, and I'm talking personally here, um, focused on who our customer is, which is a combination for us here sitting, brands as well as the consumer, and we deliver a superb service to both. Back to Mr. Norsa's point, service, experience, entertaining our customer are going to be part of our future. There is no doubt that the digital is rising, but I personally don't think for us it's a threat. It is, au contraire, another mean for the consumer to find ways of shopping. Our challenge is rather to maintain a superb service and make sure that our customers, the consumer, that is coming, for us at least, from long haul around the world, are going to be able to enjoy the experience and feel that every one of our destination remains part of their shopping checklist when they come to Europe. <coughs> so, as long as we remain focused with a superb experience and listen to what the brands need, where is their growth coming from? What do they need us to deliver? As long as we know who their cust our customer is, where she's coming from and what her needs are, and we could really speak to both those audiences in a relevant way, we should be able to continue to deliver the double-digit growth that we've delivered. We don't think that, uh, and, and I don't think either of the people on my right think, that we're uh, threatened by the internet at all. I think that there may be some slowing in the growth of both kinds of retail, any time uh, the conventional and the outlet, anytime there's some kind of new form of retail. Frankly, uh, the internet has been a boost to our business. Ours, 
as well as uh, value retails, has grown tremendously uh, in the last couple of years. It's a counter-cyclical business, but uh, uh, from, from the standpoint of value, people love our businesses when there are, uh, when there are tough times. But ours is much more than just a value business. Uh, we have an entertainment business, and it's a fabulous day out for families, people with friends, and uh, we, we have uh, entertainment at, at a number of our different centers that have days as, as over 50,000 people in a day in shopping centers as small as 30,000 meters. And uh, those are just gigantic numbers. And those aren't going away. I mean, you can't have uh, a fabulous uh, entertainment uh, on the internet. It just doesn't happen. And you can't have families of six or eight arrive in two cars at a computer uh, a terminal. And uh, we don't think we're in competition. We use Twitter, we use Facebook, and we're, we're sort of excited by those opportunities. So I don't think either threat, we don't think of it as threat at all, or competition. We think we are a great opportunity for, for, for luxury brands as well as premium brands to enhance their business. And to we are a way to introduce a quite a huge number of people. We have nearly 80 million shoppers every year at the moment. Uh, we're opening our 21st center in Hamburg uh, later this week to introduce 80 million shoppers uh, to a, quite a wide range of brands who will then ultimately go to Monte Napoleone or Bond Street. And frankly, we don't see ourselves as emptying those, uh, those conventional uh, uh, shopping ways. But we are not in competition whatsoever. We so agree on most, most everything. We are, first and foremost, an entertainment venue. Um, I'm going to throw my hat in with Mr. Uh, with Mr. Norsa there because um, Chicago, which is, for Americans, hopefully the new model from a flawed system, uh, very much unlike yours, which I applaud, both of your products, but our system had been flawed in the outlet world, but Chicago gets 90 million employments on its doorstep. And it is the new model, and I think that it encompasses the things that are the challenges for all of us going forward. The, the outlet model was 40 miles outside of a city. It was a cornfield product. It was land that was inexpensive, construction that was less expensive, and frankly, the branding was what, to me, was the oddest piece. Because here you all, uh, and Altagama in particular, have such history and great pride in your families, heritages, and your brands. And yet you would allow yourselves to go 40 miles out with um, poor glazing and a storefront that wasn't a storefront, had no character, it had nothing of your, of your um, touch to it. And hence, that, that is what the outlet model proceeded like in America. Um, when the times changed in, in 8, 9, and 10, and the outlets did flourish um, somewhat, we felt that the change had to come. And that change involved a much closer model, because the, the consumer now is paying higher gas prices, the ability to drive your family three and a half times a year, which was all that was, was, the, was the model, was no longer valid. It wasn't good for us. We're, we're not interested in shopping three times a year. We went three times a week. We recognize that in outlet shopping, tourism is the single number one most important uh, aspect of outlet shopping. And globally, when you get the opportunity to have a Chicago where it's the number one point of entry for the Asian community in America. And, and you have those opportunities, then the marketing takes over. And we are a very marketing intensive uh, channel. Um, the outlet industry, we can literally bring out the van, uh, as, as uh, was said. We can bring out the people. We do it, our midnight madness sales, which are conducted in the States around Thanksgiving, and the mall's basically open at 11, we'll get 60 and 70,000 people. 
in a little bit larger venues than, than yours, but still, the, the numbers are massive. We don't see any overlap. I, I'm, when I say overlap, <clears throat> it's not the same consumer. The outlet consumer is not Main Street sophisticated. They are not shopping on Michigan Avenue and then running out to the outlet. That's not their first consumer touch. However, we, th we think now <clears throat> that it's vital that the consumer's touch be meaningful. That when they touch your brand, when they touch Cuccinelli, maybe the first time they touched it was in a magazine sitting in the dentist's office and saw this beautiful ad and saw it again the following week and then eventually got to an outlet where there was a Cuccinelli. And then they saw the goods, and then they started to experience your, what you're about. Well, they don't, they get to buy something. <clears throat> Not necessarily off the pages of, of GQ or Vogue, but buy a garment. That, because that customer at the outlet, that's what they're doing. So we see the change had to come where there had to be a, the gap between full price and outlet in a cornfield had to change because the ability, it's not about more outlets, it's about fewer dominant flagship outlets. That's the way we see it. To, to this point, which I think is very interesting, when you look at space growth opportunities for outlet malls, uh, what kind of prospects do you see in the United States, in Europe, and, uh, and elsewhere? So I'll speak for the United States. Um, the United States certainly is having a, a point of saturation, but it's a saturation of, of separation of product, the, um, as it is in the traditional malls. The, the, um, the, the best centers are going to remain, and they're going to get stronger. The problems that are facing the B and C centers in full price are, are what to become next. But in the outlet segment, there is a saturation, and now that it's become de rigueur for outlets to, uh, you know, flavor of the month, they're popping up everywhere. They shouldn't be built everywhere. Um, you know, everyone, every developer now, um, a year and a half, two years ago, I think there were 30 centers online, dream, not dream, for, through 13 in the U.S. Now there's something like 60. Seven will be built, three should be built. So saturation becomes an issue. I do believe, however, that the, say, five given centers that surround the Chicagoland area that are each 40 miles out in every direction, Fashion Outlets of Chicago, I must, I must say, is the center of that donut. And it's built to dominate and it's built to be a wonderful, beautiful day experience. So to what was said earlier, the developer, our responsibility is to make a beautiful day experience. Whether that's driving in, parking, amenities. Um, Chicago, for instance, you can drop off your luggage. You can check your luggage all the way through. We'll give you a boarding pass. And when it's time to get you to your gate, we'll do that as well. We're within a mile of the airport. There are shuttles, there's shuttles in the village. You've got to make it a beautiful day. Your responsibility is to give that customer value and bring them to your experience, your branded experience. In Europe, we, ha we took a stand to have an extremely focused strategy we decided to go near major capital cities. We went to nine destinations, and we feel at this point that the growth we will continue to deliver will be coming out of this extremely focused flagship strategy. We're looking at China, and I'm sure we'll talk about that a bit later, as the next step of growth. It is not a question of numbers. I think it's really a question of qualitative experience. 
And because we are near major capital cities, but we're still an hour away, an hour and a half away, we better deliver a stupendous experience. Not only we're an hour and a half away, but we're actually long haul away. Our stand from the very beginning <laughs> was to talk to a very sophisticated globetrotter. I call her the globalista. Yes. And she travels the world and um, with her family, with herself, he or she basically will have discovered cities, but eventually will come out to visit one of our destinations. So we're looking at growth slightly differently. We're not looking at growth into building more. We're looking at growth by building better value and double digit within our own nine villages, looking at China as a future opportunity. Um, I think that uh, uh, there are no disagreements up here. We could, we could have sung off the same sheet of music. We have, uh, as I said, we're opening our 21st in Europe. I think we've had a broader brush than value retail here. We still think there is good growth uh, possibility. There are good growth possibilities in Europe, uh, but we are being very selective now. Uh, there, are, there, are, there, there, there are no outlets in the Hamburg region, for example. It's the second richest and second largest area in Germany. We've had absolutely spectacular response from our, what we think of as our first German project, which actually sits on the German border in Holland. It's the second or third highest per square meter sales area in, in, uh, in any outlet in Europe. It's doing approaching uh, 14,000 euros a square meter over 335,000 square meters. This is uh, uh, Roermond in, in uh, and it's, it's a spectacular center, and it has another phase to go. So we think the German shopper has uh, a tremendous appetite for what we deliver. And I think that uh, Value Retail has had a similar experience in two outlets in Germany. So, so we still think there's, there's demand in Germany. Um, and in Italy, we, 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 we are doing, I think, what uh, Value Retail has done, which is to, to put our energy into expanding what we already have uh, because they are uh, our, our latest there in Naples, now has Armani, Valentino, Prada, uh, two polo stores, a number of other fabulous brands, and uh, we are alone in the Naples uh, region, which has nearly six million people and no outlets, and and frankly, it doesn't have any great brands. Uh, there are a few in downtown Naples, and we are the safest, most pleasant place to shop in the entire region. And I think that's one of the things that, uh, that, that quality outlet shopping can bring. And, and we're trying to do that. In the United States, I, I agree with Arthur. I mean, I think what, what he's doing in, uh, in, in, uh, in Chicago will be an absolute breakthrough. And, uh, and I'm excited to, to see it open. And, and uh, we're going to do that in Vancouver as well um, on a smaller scale. We are also at the airport in Vancouver. Uh, and I think there'll be a lot of inter interplay both there and, and we have it already in Venice. So it's, it's very exciting to see. I think China's uh, a, a very exciting play as well. Um, so we're, 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 we're still very excited by our business. We, we've looked at the internet, incidentally, again and again and think, you know, we have a great relationship with our, with our tenants and we think that's, we have two customers. We have the everyday folks who come and go, and we also have our brands, without whom we wouldn't be in business. But there is no doubt that, uh, that the internet is a fascinating uh, a business. M my children insist on shopping through the internet. It annoys the hell out of me, I gotta tell you. I should take away their credit cards. Uh, but, uh, um, but there's still a lot of touch and feel, and, and if you like retail therapy, and I must admit, it's embarrassing to say this, I do occasionally. You can't get it in the same way on the internet. And incidentally, I was going to tell you this. You, you talk about your women shoppers, and I, I think that that's true. At, at Naples, it's absolutely the reverse of all of our other centers. 
uh, nearly 60% of our shoppers are men. Now, I, I don't know that I can make any mafia jokes here, so I have to be very careful. I was going to say, evidently, the well-dressed mafia uh, comes shopping with us, although we've never had any problems. Uh, I want to ask a, a different question, because one interesting thing I think that's coming out, both from what you were saying and both from what we heard from uh, some of the uh, traditional brands, is that... Um, development in the future is not going to come from lots of new square meters or square foot. It's going to come from existing assets primarily. Um, or, um, uh, less so than in, in the past, where we've had for the last five or six or ten years tremendous development of new retail space overall. Uh, and I kind of get the feeling it's going to be somewhat different in years to come. It's bring, getting more out of your existing, uh, existing assets. Uh, so you talked about the top line growth, uh, which is clearly the real driver uh, or the most important driver in luxury business with high gross margin. Um, so I'll, you know, I'll ask the question, do you, are you really confident you can get the double digit growth from you know, like, like for like existing assets? And then on the other hand, how important is managing cost? is, right? given uh, managing cost uh, in a business where you need to uh, get from the same assets increasing productivity. Number one, I, I think that retooling existing assets, um, in some cases it's plausible, in other cases what does it want to be? So we're in the outlet business. Um, we're not going to take a product and make it an outlet for just because we have the asset. We would more than likely sell the asset if it no longer fit into that. You know, I look at all of this and I see that it's, it's more a change in the social experience that we're all talking about. And the, the, there's a fusion here. In Chicago, for instance, it will be the first street art museum in the world. We've invited 12 to 15 of the most important street artists, urban artists, muralists, illustrators through the world to come and use my palette, use our canvas. And at any given time, you talk about tourism and you talk about proximity to airports, at any given time, there'll be 2,500 people pulling up in buses to go to an art museum that happens to have 130 stores, and the reverse. And I think this is, this is the part and parcel of what has been said. It's entertainment. We're in the entertainment business. And to do things like that, which are cumulative, they're, they're, they're ingratiating to the community that you are living in, um, they provide something of value, and it's not just a flat commercial endeavor. We do have. We have a lot of walls, and we get to use those walls because there are artists who seek them, and heretofore never had that opportunity. So I think it's things like that that, that will keep our model going, and at the end of the day, I think that our product um, becomes one of balancing the brand. I think that the outlet product is, uh, certainly has been in Europe a lovely, sophisticated product. In America, it's about to be. And um, you know, my hope is that that will that will take care of some of that existing inventory that you spoke about. It will go away. It will have to go away. So. I think you raised two issues and two points. The first one is about continuing to de de develop or deliver double product, double digit productivity um, for the brands. And the second one is our productivity as a property developer. To the first point, <clears throat> we based our business model on a department store operation. We're retailers. And to deliver such productivity for the brands, clearly we had to hire absolute expert retailers who are trained professionals in the industry to understand the brand equity, to understand and be able to service the brand, more so since actually 2008, 
than ever before. In 2008, the world stopped. And what was important for us is to make sure that the focus on the retailing, the stores, was being delivered for great results. So, if we continue to really work on an operative model that is innovative, agile, we will continue to deliver double-digit growth. And that's something actually Marvin Traub had nicely quoted on us um, in one of his books. Um, now, the other point is to ourselves, how productive we could be. Now, knock on wood, Bister has been year on year the flagship as a worldwide delivery of productivity in terms of yield. Um, the second one would be Lavallee, which is really another flagship of delivery of yield, and we're expanding the third phase this year. And if I continue in Spain, we are the number one yield, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that has managed to deliver through absolute consistency of marketing but really marketing um, the right <coughs> messages around the world. Tourism is an emerging channel more so than ever before. The world has gone global. The sheer number of double-digit growth of tourism and the right tourists for us, on an average, our global refund numbers are about 400, 400 euros per head. That's staggering number for outlet. And that number will continue to grow in my prediction. And as long as we're continuing to talk to her locally, in Chinese, in Malaysia, in Korean, while we're speaking to the European, she, we will be, continue to be relevant. We had to spend a lot of money having 14 languages websites. Why? Because we needed to really be local to her relevancy while we're thinking global. And I think it's no different than any of the brands around the world trying to really be relevant to the customer. I think that's really actually something we need to keep an eye on. Uh, trying to address your two points, uh, not make too many marketing points for ourselves. We are, uh, we, um, I'm surprised you're only at 400, because I think we think we're at 650 or 700 for our average traveler, but we, we, you may have many more than we, uh, although uh, we, have, we have quite a few centers that, uh, that now attract a, a huge number of overseas uh, tourists. Uh, and we use Global Blue, of course, as well. I think that uh, our profitability has increased uh, uh, modestly, but of course it's increased tremendously because of our increased business. But in terms of actual percentage per uh, uh, euro of sales, it, it goes up modestly. We spend a tremendous amount every year, a tremendous amount uh, on uh, keeping our properties up. Uh, it's like any property business. You can milk it, which means taking out everything you can, or you can realize that we've, we've gotten uh, very successful properties and we uh, continue to keep them uh, at, at a very high level. And uh, frankly, uh, I, I believe, and I, I know that Julia Calabrese, who, who is my partner in this business, believes that we should be spending yet more to keep our properties up, you almost can't spend enough. And it's one of the things that makes our outlets, and I think uh, uh, value retails, unlike anybody else's in, in Europe, places people really like going because they're clean, the bathrooms are wonderful, we have picnic areas, great places to eat on top of entertainment, uh, free parking and lots of it, and, and they're handsome and 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 always something new is happening and this is this is expensive uh, and because we still manage every one of our centers and own a piece of every one of our centers uh, we have a lot of control 
and a lot of others have put them into funds that they don't control and other things, and we still control every one. And I, I think that that's a very vital part of our business. Um, and uh, what was the first point? The first point was? Well, the returns keep growing more than double digit uh, in some of our centers, uh, as much, not triple digit, although the foreign, foreign business is, is up triple digit in some of our centers. And I think th th we're just thrilled with, with uh, being near airports, which we are in Rome and we are, of course, in Venice. And the Venice retail at the airport is ours. Uh, we, we control that. We control Dublin retail and Glasgow retail. So we, we have a, an airport retail business. Um, it's, it's a valuable business and it's a valuable to have the interplay. I'm not sure I would have gone into it if I'd known everything then that I know now, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's been exciting. We have Michaela as a tenant. He's not here anymore. He's rushed back to make more money for Ferragamo. But, uh, but it's, it's, it's still a, a really, it's a growing business. And certainly we've been growing much more quickly uh, than conventional retail. Although not as quickly as, as at the outlet as the internet business, I, I think the internet has taken some of our business. Uh, that's not really how I view it. It's grown more rapidly than the outlet business, and certainly much more rapidly than the conventional uh, uh, retail business or, or directly owned stores. But I don't think any of us are planning to go out of business at all. My God. Of course, we believe that. Uh <clears throat> in the uh, luxury brand perspective, what is mandatory is the integration. Is uh, founding the, a proper way of, uh, let's say, presenting products range and, and products value and brand value in the best possible way in whatever retail channel. And uh, as uh, we mentioned from uh, the very beginning of this conference, uh, in the last 20 years, the three channels that have been growing uh, faster have been uh, the luxury outlet business, the luxury uh, 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 retail, uh, airport retail, and the, and the digital uh, uh, luxury retail. So we have started, uh, we have presented in these uh, new uh, uh, co for, uh, concept, conference format uh, the <coughs> uh, report that we have been doing uh, for the second time with McKinsey on the digital luxury experience, we are willing to present next year, September 2013, a report on the uh, luxury outlet experience and uh, a brand new analysis on the luxury airport retailing. As these, as a matter of fact, have been uh, very important factors and boosters of the consumption of luxury group, uh, uh, goods worldwide, mainly because the three, uh, uh, such as three uh, formats, uh, retailing channels, as give uh, luxury brands, uh, the Italian ones, the European ones, the American ones, the opportunity of enlarging the consumer base. And as a matter of fact, without airport retailing and uh, without uh, uh, outlet uh, uh, luxury outlet business, uh, uh, the risk uh, would be for uh, the majority of luxury brands to have just the aficionados, the fashionistas, the cognoscenti in the uh, high, uh, high street of the world. So we believe that uh, as these are, have been so vital so far, and we are sure that uh, are, uh, they, uh, these retail channels are going to be um, hopefully uh, more vital in the future that uh, probably an opportunity of thinking about what are the uh, intersection and uh, potential uh, ways of improving the business model could be useful. Uh, why not uh, in the next, uh, uh, we will have uh, our value retail or MacArthur Land or Talisman uh, starting with their own uh, 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 retail uh, uh, business on the internet, not just using the digital as a, a media, uh, uh, but uh, uh, going through, uh, I, I, I remember that uh, probably 10, 12 years ago, in a discussion with Joy Kempfer, uh, he emphasized very strongly the fact that uh, his own business is uh, 
uh, uh, retail development, in it, which is a very specific part uh, of the real, uh, real, uh, real estate business. I am not a retailer. I can be a, a, a very important consumer, but probably never a retailer. I believe that now uh, the, the rule of the games are a little bit different. And uh, I think that uh, the opportunity of retailing on the internet uh, are much more open also to uh, companies and people that so far uh, are not uh, uh, yet, uh, had not been yet in the, in the retailing, uh, in retailing business. I believe that there are between uh, the retail developers and the tenants uh, probably something else that can, could be developed, why well, not jointly, for example. Anyway, <clears throat> I would like to thank uh, the panelists, I would like to thank uh, the audience, and I would like to inform you that uh, I believe from tomorrow evening a synthesis of the, all of this conference will be broadcasted online, uh, and, uh, and so it will be uh, mostly probably seen, but uh, thousands of people uh, in the next uh, um, in the next few weeks, uh, and uh, thank you again. Now I, uh, there is time for a, for a drink. All the best. <laughs>